Hi everyone, welcome back. The definition of flight is described as when the aircraft moves under its own power until it comes to rest after landing. The A320 is powered by three engine options, the IAE, the CFM and the NEO engines. Today I'll brief you on how to start the IAE engines which produce approximately 27,000 pounds of thrust. <music> I am Utkarsh, welcome to flight level 070. Today I will brief you on how to perform an automatic engine start followed by the after start flows. This video will be in continuation of Do Flows playlist for which I will leave a link in the description below. So let's go and start in the simulator. We will begin with the engine start procedure. For easy reference I will pull up these pages here. Engine mode selector ignition start, mode selector to ignition start. So amber crosses disappear and lower display displays engine system display. Engine 2 announce, so ground cockpit clear to start. They will advise if the area is clear to start. You announce starting engine 2. Check all amber crosses out and we will start engine 2 first as it powers the yellow hydraulic which pressurizes the parking brake. Engine master 2 on. Engine master 2 on. Valve is in line. Bleed pressure check. Oil pressure increase check. N2 is increasing. Waiting for igniters and fuel flow. Fadic ensures the 30 second delay. Okay, igniter, fuel flow. Within 20 seconds, we should observe light up, which will be indicated by the EGT. So, EGT started rising. In case electrical supply is interrupted, which can be noticed with the display units being lost, you need to abort the start by putting the master switch to off and performing a dry crank. Beyond 43% N2, the valve changes cross line and the ignition goes off. And we wait for the parameters to stabilize. Avail light indicates that the engine is available in ideal parameters. You can cross check the idle parameters on sea level and ISA conditions. E per should be around 1.01, N1 about 21.4%, N2 about 57.8, EGT about 414 degrees Celsius and fuel flow about uh, 400 kgs per hour. So values are pretty much okay. This is also we are not in ISA conditions as of now. The same will be repeated for engine 1 start. She will announce to ground, ground the cockpit, clear to start. They will advise if you are clear to start engine 1 or not. Then why starting engine 1? Put the masters on. Valve opens, N2 is increasing, lead pressure check. Okay, igniters, fuel flow, waiting for light up, checking the EGT, EGT increases checked, at 43% of uh, N2, igniter will go off and valve will be cross line, so 43% N2, igniter is off and valve cross line, waiting for the engine to stabilize, the avail will confirm if the engine is available. Okay, avail light is there and the grey background disappears. This confirms successful engine start. During any abnormal situation, the FADEC automatically detects 
and applies a recovery procedure without any ECAM, you might notice dual ignition and fuel being commanded off and then back on within half a second. This is to recover the situation and no crew action is required. The entire engine start procedure will be with the PF and now we will begin with the after start flows. So we put the engine mode selector back to normal and if after engine shutdown it has been more than 2 hours to avoid thermal shock you operate the engine at idle for more than 5 minutes before high power is applied. After last engine start which will be engine 1 you must run 2 minutes before takeoff to ensure that takeoff is not initiated before the center tank pump is finished as center tank pump uh, takeoff is prohibited. Then you put the APU bleed to off. So we go up to the overhead panel, put the APU bleed off. This is to avoid ingestion of engine exhaust gases. Anti-ice as required. So engine anti-icing whenever you are in icing condition, you should put them on. And for any reason if the fault light remains and the valve is not open, you can increase the thrust so that N2 increases by up to 5 percent and when the valve is open the fault light will disappear and then you can retard the thrust back to idle. Wing anti-icing as required if there is any evidence of ice accretion then you can put the anti-icing on to remove any ice accumulation on the leading edge. If APU is not required we can put the APU off. APU master off. This will be the flow for the PF. In the meanwhile, the PM will arm the spoilers. Check the rudder trim. If it is not 0, then reset the rudder trim to 0. Flap lever set for takeoff. We set the flap to 1 and cross check the position. If taxi is expected in icing scenarios, then delay selection of flaps until you are on the holding point. This is to prevent any contamination of the surfaces. Then set the pitch trim. So, it is saying 0. So, I will set the pitch trim to 0. Then if there is any memo for ECAM status, then the status push button needs to be pressed and a status should be reviewed. But if it, there is no indication of status, then there is no need to press the status push button as everything is ok. Then you check the nose wheel steering disconnect memo is not available in case pushback was performed. And you can advise the ground crew to disconnect. The call will be ground cockpit clear to disconnect, hand signals on the left or the right depending on the scenario. Thereafter, it will be followed with the after start checklist. I hope it was interesting. Please leave your inputs in the comment section and don't forget to review your SOPs from time to time.